What's up guys, Nick here from Goats on the Road. Um, I wanted to make a quick video today about working and traveling because it's something that obviously comes near and dear to my heart. Before we started this lifestyle of working on the road and traveling, I was working 12 plus hour shifts every single day, you know, five, six days a week. I worked at a job I didn't really enjoy and I didn't have any time to travel. I only had two weeks vacation per year maximum. And to me and Doris, that just wasn't enough. And she had a similar situation, although she had three weeks a year of holidays, 15 days. She also had to work, you know, eight, nine hour shifts every day. And we just didn't have enough to travel. And we felt like even though we had good jobs and everything at home and we had a nice house and we had a car, we just really felt like something was missing. And we really wanted to get out and learn about different cultures and explore the world. And that just wasn't possible in our, in our situation at the time. And that was back in about 2008. And then we decided, you know, let's go on this trip. We left and slowly over the years, we figured out ways to work and travel. So that's what I want to share with you today, because now that we've been running this blog for a long time and our blog goatsontheroad.com is all about different ways that you can make money um, online, on the road and on the go. So you can travel as much as you want and turn travel into a lifestyle. It means that we've interviewed a lot of people and we figured out a lot of different ways that you can do to make money on the road and to keep on traveling or to make extra money on the side, like a side hustle from home so that you can save up more money and you can go traveling sooner. It's the best thing that ever happened to us was figuring this all out. So I really wanted to quickly make this video and share it with you the best techniques that we have. And also there's an article down below. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's a link for the article. And if you're watching this on the blog, you can just scroll down and read the rest of this article. Um, and if you're on Facebook, there'll be a link above. So let's get started. Why, why would you want to work and travel? What, what would be the point of this? Well, the best part for us is that we're able to travel and live abroad full time. That's something we could have only dreamed of before when we were just doing quick trips. Uh, we wake up when we want to wake up now. We make our own hours. If we want to take a day off, we just take a day off because we work for ourselves. We're working from our pajamas. And by working online, we're able to make more money than we ever made in Canada and than we would have ever been able to make. And we're only working about 15 hours per week. So it's kind of this insane, almost too good to be true lifestyle. And it's possible and it's not like... It's not unattainable. If you just take the steps to start doing it now, you can reach this point in a, in a year. In some cases, you can reach it within a few weeks because some of these jobs I'm going to share with you today and in the article down below are jobs you can pick up right away and you can start making money from home as a side hustle, like I said, or while you're already traveling. So the first thing is that you have to change your mindset, I think, about money. That's something that we did after we started traveling and we realized that Money isn't really like a status or it's not about material possessions. For us, it became about the experiences that we could have. And like every dollar that we were making in our jobs in Canada, for example, were then we thought of as experiences on the road. You know, if I worked an extra hour at work, maybe I could pay for a motorbike rental somewhere or a car or a night's stay. So that switch in mindset really helped us to realize that it's not so important to make a ton of money right away as long as that money is going towards things that are going to better your life and give you a freer lifestyle. And another thing to keep in mind is that it's not for everyone. There are some downsides to working and traveling. To me, the upsides far outweigh the downsides. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine doing anything else besides what we're doing now. But there are a few downsides. Like if you're doing remote work and you're doing a normal job, but um, remotely, then you might have to have meetings, you know, with people in another country, in which case then you'd have to be online at ungodly hours and wake up for that. Um, sometimes there's bad Wi-Fi. So if you're working online, it's not always easy to get that good Wi-Fi connection. And sometimes you have to have early flights. You're traveling a lot. You have no home base maybe at first. But these are all things that travelers deal with anyways in most cases. So it's really, really worth it to us. I think that it's still something that you should definitely try to pursue if you're interested in traveling full time or living abroad full time and making money while you're doing it. The first way that you can basically start to work and travel, I think, is that now that the internet's more popular, there's better Wi-Fi all around the world, more and more people are, you know, pitching their boss to see if they can do remote work while they're gone. So basically the best way to do that is to first pitch your boss to ask if you can work maybe one day a week and tell them that you'll be more productive on that day. You know, if, if your boss lets you leave work and you can do your office work from at home one day a week, then make sure on those days you're working super productive and you're proving that, hey, like I'm less distracted than I would be in the office. You know, I, the, the office lighting doesn't give me a migraine anymore. I feel more focused. And there's actually been a two year Stanford University study that proves 
that people work more productive from home. So you can bring that up with your boss, try to see if that helps to sway him or her to let you work remotely or work from home at first. Yeah, another way to do it is to have an excuse. Sometimes you can say, you know, you have children, you can tie it into a maternity or paternity leave. Uh, you have medical issues that you wanna be home for. Maybe you get migraines, like I said, from the office lighting. There's little things you can use as excuses that are, if they're honestly true, and you think that you're gonna work better from home, you can tell your boss that and try to get them to test the working from home scenario with you based on a few issues that you have in the office. If you're accepted, you definitely do have to be more productive. And eventually your goal will be to go full time and work remotely from home at home. So that'll be the first step into the full on work and travel mode, right? If you can get your boss to let you work five days a week from your home office rather than coming in, then it's true that your job is completely done remotely. You don't need to be in the office and you, in fact, you don't even need to be in your home country. You could be traveling. So when you go to move to that next step of, okay, I'm going to be working remotely at my normal job, but also from the road, then the best thing to do, I think, is to start with like a short period of time, maybe a small vacation period where you go for a week and you say to your boss, like, yeah, normally I would take this off as holidays, but I know we're super busy right now. Can I go on this vacation? Maybe it's a wedding or something that's important, an anniversary, but I'm going to be working while I'm there. And while you're gone for that week, you continue your work, you continue to be super productive. And when you come back, your boss is likely going to say like, wow, you did a lot of work, even though you were gone away from the country and you managed to do all this stuff and get everything done. Usually you can, you know, continue on and get that remote work permanently that way and you could say now I'm going to leave for a month and then two months and eventually you could be completely doing your home job from the road remotely and I wasn't able to do this with my job not every job obviously is going to be uh, remote work friendly in my case my job I worked in a uh, plastic packaging factory for a while about eight years and I also worked in the oil rigs in oil and gas before we left Canada and in those cases, no, it's not going to be super easy because they need you on the floor. They need you to be in person at the at the job clocking in every day. But some jobs like Doris's was it was possible to work remotely. She was a legal assistant and she did this. She asked her boss if she could work from home a, a day a week. And she also applied at other uh, law offices around the city we were living in in Calgary and asked them, hey, can can I get some extra work from you and I'll do it at home? And it worked for her. So depending on the type of job you have, before you just go ahead and quit and try to work and travel that way, you might be able to make it work where you can do your same job, make that same at-home money right off the bat, but be doing it from the road. So that's that's one way to do it. The other job, the other way to do this is the way that Doris and I did it, and that is to quit your job completely to travel. And yeah, we, we did that because we had saved up a bunch of money um, and we had prepared for this trip we sold a house we sold our car we had to store all of our things it makes it a little bit more difficult but it's definitely definitely doable and once you're on the road these days there's travel jobs so we've written about this a lot on our blog we actually have we've written the book on travel jobs we have a ebook called 101 ways to make money on the road and every single one of those is basically a travel job or an online job and i'll link that as well in the description down below but Nowadays, you can quit your job. Basically, you can have I, I recommend having a little bit of money saved. Um, we had a lot because we weren't planning on working from the road. We wanted to do like a year gap year where we didn't do any work. But if you're if you really want to leave now or as soon as possible, I think you should save a few grand in the bank after you pay for your flights to the destination you're going. And it's possible, you know, to go and work in a hostel, to go and work as, as a dive master. If you have your dive master certification, you can work on cruise ships without having much certification other than a degree. You can teach English in Thailand and China and Singapore. There's a lot of different options out there. All right. And now I want to talk a little bit about the lifestyle. We've already talked a little bit about how you get to choose your own hours and how you can work from home in your pajamas and all that awesome stuff about it. But there's more to it than just that. Uh, one of the things that we like that we don't take advantage of enough, but it's kind of a cool part of this whole lifestyle is the fact that you get to work at co-working spaces with a bunch of like-minded people, all like, you know, traveling and working and trying to figure out how to make money on the road. And there's a really good community there in all of these co-working spaces. And generally you go and you pay 
maybe 50 or 100 bucks a month and that gives you access to the really good wi-fi that they usually have plus the community and they often do a bunch of events every week you know something about remote work how to do this aspect of remote work better how to market your business better all those kind of things and that's a really great way to kind of learn a lot from other people while having a community because of course you don't want to have to get up and go to an office every day like for somebody else's gains and it's somebody else's schedule but if you're going to hang out with a bunch of people that are just like you that are trying to make money online and do this whole remote work thing then it's a really good way to have that community and enjoy that with other people there's also a great online community that comes with this kind of work. If you're working and traveling, typically you'll have Facebook groups that you're a part of. Maybe you have your own blog and you have your own group of followers that you talk to and communicate all the time. And that's a great part of it as well because you get to keep spitballing with other people and learning from other people as well that way. Another part of this lifestyle that we really enjoy is the conferences that we get to go to and the events. Sometimes we get invited to them or sometimes we buy tickets to go to them, but they're always fun. And there's always a bunch of other online work travelers, bloggers, um, you can go to English teaching online conferences, things like that. And it's a great way to meet other people that are in the business, learn from them, but also make those connections, you know, and, and, and have a group of friends that way as well. And then when you're traveling around the world, you might meet up with different people who you met at different online work conferences and you say, oh, it like, let's meet up in Bali for a week or something. It's a great way to have a community, which is important when you're traveling all the time. Because as I talked about earlier, one of the one of the cons about this lifestyle is sometimes you don't have that home base or that community that that group of friends that you're used to. So by having these online friends that you meet at conferences or you meet in the co-working spaces or you meet online through your own channels, that's a great way to have that in your life. And lastly, my favorite part about this lifestyle as a travel blogger is that we're hired by tourism boards to go and travel the country or the province or the city or, or the state and enjoy that and we usually get all of our expenses paid, plus we're paid a salary on top of that. So it's a great way to you know, actually literally work and travel or get paid to travel, which again sounds too good to be true, but it's so much fun when you get those opportunities and it's definitely worth all the hard work that goes in to get you to a point where you can finally get those kind of jobs. So lastly in this video, before I finish it off here, I just wanna list a few of the jobs that you can do online, on the road and on the go to make some good money and you can start these kind of things right away. Um, First, I wanna talk about doing surveys online. This is this doesn't pay that well. It's You probably, if you do surveys for three or four hours a day, you're only gonna bring in about you know five to $10 an hour doing this. So it's not great money. You're not gonna get rich doing surveys online. But it's a great thing to do if you're at work on your break and you're bored and you're already on the computer watching videos anyway, because some of these sites pay you to just to watch advertising videos or complete a survey or just you know scroll around websites and review them. So they're a good way to make money kind of doing what you're already doing when you're just wasting time on the computer anyway. And yeah, five bucks an hour isn't great, but if you're traveling on a budget and you're on the road and you go on the computer for an hour and you make five bucks, well, that pays for your accommodation maybe or half a night's stay or it pays for your motorbike rental in Southeast Asia. So it is a good way to just kind of bolster that budget and give yourself a little bit to run with, a little bit extra, and to have that feeling of making money online and on the road. Next up, I wanna talk about my favorite way to make money uh, while traveling, of course. This is travel blogging. This is what we decided to go with. We had tried a bunch of travel jobs before, and honestly, the best way to work and travel and to get paid to travel is by starting your own travel blog because the opportunities are endless. This job can pay anywhere from zero dollars when you're starting out because you're not going to make any money most likely at first all the way to twenty five thousand dollars a month or more i know some bloggers that are making incredible money out there so it's a great job to have but the, the good thing about it is you build your own community which i was talking about a little bit earlier so you get to help a lot of people if you're writing about how to be more eco-conscious you can have a bigger impact in the world if you're writing about how to help people do what we're doing and try to do remote jobs you get emails from people saying thank you so much you helped me quit my job and travel it's a really rewarding rewarding job once you build up a bit of traffic and to get started all you have to do is start your own blog we recommend using Bluehost and we have a post that teaches you exactly how to start a blog in just five minutes I'll link that down below as well and with it you get our free four-part video course the WordPress beginners blogger course and that's normally 120 bucks with the ebook that comes with it but we give it away for free because we get commission when you start your blog through Bluehost uh, but we do run our blog as well through Bluehost love the service and we think it's the best one for starting a new blog of any niche it doesn't have to be travel it can be a tech blog it can be any kind of blog that you're interested in as long as you're writing about something you're passionate about and you know that you can write a lot of posts about it 
Next up is teaching English online. This is a great job. It's a job that wasn't available to us when we started. We actually had to move to China to teach English for a year on a contract. These days, you don't have to do that. You can actually make more money teaching English online with companies like VIP Kid, Q Kids, and English First. I'll link those down below as well. Um, great companies. They pay up to $22 an hour. You will have to have your TEFL certificate, which I'll also link below, and you'll have to have your bachelor's degree in any, in any it doesn't have to be like an education bachelor's degree or an English bachelor's degree just any bachelor's degree but to get a job with most of these you'll have to have those and you'll also have to be from either the States the UK or Canada for the three companies I just listed but those are the best companies so if you're lucky enough to be from one of those three countries those are great companies to go with and they have their own curriculum you don't have to make your own lesson plans and they help you a lot as a teacher next up house sitting this is something that we did for years and we loved it it's a great thing to do uh, you can start sign up with trustedhousesitters.com again linked below and this this website is amazing it's got hundreds and hundreds of different house sitting jobs all around the world and typically these are beautiful homes in our experience they've always come with a vehicle for free so you get to save all that money every month by not paying for accommodation and not paying for your transport and you also get to usually have a little furry friend because they're often pet sits so you might have a cat or a dog or a donkey or a horse or a hedgehog I don't know there's tons of animals on there but they're really fun actually and one of the best experiences we ever had was house sitting down here in the Caribbean because we got to feel like locals, we met local people, we met the friends of the homeowners, we had our own car to drive around, it's just a blast. And in some cases you do get paid. We got paid a couple times, but we know of people who are getting paid as much as $1,500 per month. And some of these house sits can go on for five or six months. The ones we were doing in the Caribbean was a five, six month sit. So that's perfect. And oftentimes if you do it one year, you can go back every year thereafter. So you can kind of plan that, hey, half the year, I don't have to pay for accommodation or transport. I get to hang out with my dog friend or my cat friend and I get to save all that money and make some money on the side as well. Next up, I want to talk about freelance writing. It's something that we did when we started out. When we were first starting with our blog, we were house sitting to save money on accommodation and we were trying to build our blog, but it wasn't making very much money yet. So we started freelance writing and this is a great way if you're already writing for your blog or you know how to write or you're an expert on a topic, you can pitch websites and magazines. Just reach out to them, um, email them and ask them if they're looking for any contributions. And if you can get on there, those articles typically pay between $50 an article to $500, $12 hundred dollars an article they pay a lot at some of the more popular ma magazines websites newspapers and online newspapers and stuff like that if you can get on a retainer where you kind of have your own column on the website and you're writing three or four articles per month then maybe each article is a hundred dollars each and you're getting four or five hundred dollars a month guaranteed income from your freelancing career and that's a great way to make some money on the road as well and last I just want to talk quickly about flex jobs um, I'm not sponsored by them or anything that's not why I created this video I just think that they're a great way to find remote work jobs they have a huge huge library directory of different jobs that can pay anywhere from you know 10 bucks an hour to 50 60 70 thousand dollars a year and you can do the job you're an expert at at home in many cases online so in Doris's case where she was working as a legal assistant she could have done that through flex jobs probably got a job uh, remotely making pretty much the same as she was in Canada so definitely I'll link that down below check out that website basically anything that you can think of that's a remote job you'll probably find on there and they've been around since 2007 they're one of the most highly respected and popular online remote work jobs websites there are so check them out for sure and that's it. I've listed a lot more jobs down below and the article is also a, has a lot more in-depth information about what we talked about in this video and a bunch of other stuff about remote work and working and traveling. So check that out. Definitely go down, click it or scroll down if you're already on the website and read it. There's a lot of useful information in there and a bunch of different remote work jobs you can do as well and travel jobs. So yeah, check that out. And if you want as well, subscribe to our newsletter. I'll link that down below and you can get our 101 Travel Jobs ebook for free and we'll send you a bunch of emails to help you kind of learn how to do this lifestyle, how to quit your job, how to work remotely, how to do all these things we're talking about in this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a thumbs up, maybe hit that subscribe button so you can get future videos like this and travel videos as well. And I hope to see you around soon. All right, until next time, later. Thank <laughs> you.